She's such a hard worker. We we're going out for, for drinks after, and she wants to skip that to work on, on making a gear. I went to visit an engineering student design team at the University of Toronto. Why? To show you what it's like. And if I could sum it up in one word, it would be chaos. So can you start off by introducing yourself? Well, um, so I'm Miles, Miles Athan. Uh, I am the captain of the University of Toronto Super Mario Design Team, specifically for the Urban Concept Vehicle. Now back at my, uh, for my third year, actually, with this design team. So I was a, a structural lead for the first two, a structural division lead, and then now I am the captain of the team. And joining the design team killed my imposter syndrome. It's, it's, uh, it's really somewhere where you can apply yourself and feel passionate about it, and it's like, I don't have the usual lazy tendencies that I have with other things, uh, so I really like this design team. But um, oh, what else do you want me to talk about outside of that? Should I? No, that's good. <laughs> that's good. Okay. We always talk about the importance of like design teams and doing personal projects, but like, what is it like behind the scenes? So today I'm going to a design team at U of T. I'm just gonna talk to them, see what it's like to actually work for a design team, and I'll share that with you. The blade on the bandsaw is made out of wood? No, it's got wooden te wood teeth. Like it's oh, coarse yeah, yeah, teeth. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. he's trying to cut aluminium with it. And he's just going to shred. Right now? Well, no, I stopped him. But. Okay, good. <laughs> it's like freezing rain outside. Yeah, it's fun. That's it? horrible. I want to show if it's even useful to be part of a design team, see what kind of problems they've been facing recently, and just try to understand how a team of 15 or so engineering students are able to build a car from scratch. So, hi, my name is Callie. Um, I'm one of the mechatronics. Oh, sorry, can I restart? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I'm one of the sub leads on the powertrain division, and I'm mechatronics sub lead. Yeah, so uh, my name is Ming Ha. I go by Ming sometimes. Uh, I'm a third year mechanical engineering student. Um, I'm Katie. I'm a third year uh, mechanical engineering student at U of T and one of the aero body co leads for ETSM. I'm Kira. I'm also a third year mechanical engineering student and I'm also a co lead for aero body. My name is Will. I'm the technical director of the UTSM Power. You just said urban concept vehicle, that's the one, hydrogen powered urban concept vehicle. And yeah, I'm a chemical engineering student from the University of Toronto in my final year. Something I didn't tell these students when I met them is they remind me a lot from some of my old coworkers that I used to work at at Tesla or some of the tech startups I worked at in the past. Like just the way they talk, the way they think, some of them reminds me a lot of my old Tesla engineering coworkers, like a lot. Well, my name's Emma Day. I'm the division lead of the powertrain at UTSM. I'm a mechanical engineer currently in my fourth year, and I just came back from PUI, which is a year co-op placement. Uh, challenges, uh, funding. <laughs> Funding's a big one. Um, like, we get funding from the university. Uh, it's generally not enough. That problem never really goes away. If you find yourself working in tech startups, funding and investors and sponsors will always be an issue. Unless you work for like a massive company, then you never have to worry about funding. It's working with the hydrogen fuel cell has been the toughest. There's a lot of safety regulations around hydrogen. And I don't think, you know, when people hear the word, they're, they think of, you know, how explosive it is. Right now, we kind of struggle between, we want to make the best car possible, uh, but we really have to rely on on, on companies and sponsors to be able to get that done. Some issues we faced earlier was that when we attached the pedal, the car would just run no matter if we pressed it down or up. So essentially the pedal didn't work. Um, and this was because we bought a cheaply made pedal uh, that didn't function right. So what we decided to do was redesign the whole thing um, to make sure it worked. We had to design all the different aspects of the pedal. Um, and different components in CAD and then assemble them. Uh, we may have, me and my team may have miscommunicated uh, bearing sizes. To each other? Yeah. So yeah, but it's fine, you just make it smaller. Sure. Yeah. Fun drinking session tonight. Yeah, okay, it's okay. <laughs> we want to have this, the, this air body finished by January. December, January. Yeah, the yeah. end of January. Yeah. And be able to actually put on the car. 
Yeah. And wow, that's coming up soon. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, coming and midterms are in soon. December, right? So. Mm-hmm. No exams midterms. are in December. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, sorry. Finals. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, now that's we had nice. midterms and we have more midterms after. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my. Okay. And then exams. So it's basically then just exams. exams until the end of December. I would be stressed if I had exams in a couple of weeks and I'm busy spending my day building a car, but to be honest. It is more stressful, but it is smarter. What they're doing is so much smarter to be building a car than studying, because at the end of the day, the job you will get is gonna be so similar to what you're doing at the design team itself. So a lot of our cars are made out of this, because it's like this versus wood, it's like way lighter and way stronger. This is it. This is like the raw piece. So you see how it's like a lot, like, it's not super strong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's like a honeycomb shape, right? Oh, okay, so okay. It's just a shell, and then it gets saturated with... It's like plastic? It's like plastic on the inside, and then fibers. I don't know, really know what's made up. But and then you put the carbon fiber layer on each end? Yeah, because obviously, like, steel would be the strongest, but of course, you don't want it. It's heavy, car, really heavy, yeah. Pounds, right? It's really heavy, yeah. So, yeah. this is what our bulkhead is made out of. It's what our floor is made out of. Sprocket. Oh, that, yeah. Was, is the only major problem. Everything else is kind of without it. This whole car started two and a half years ago by one girl who tried to do the whole thing herself. Yeah, Christine. And she did a good job, but definitely should have got more help. And so there's a lot of small mistakes we keep discovering. And the big one right now is the sprocket. She spent a lot of money getting water jet cut. Would you say it like doesn't fit? The sprocket is, what's, what, what part is you guys called the sprocket? Well, the sprocket would be mounted using shaft collars. Yeah, well, here. Mm. So that the motor is like a chain and pulley, chain and drive yeah. system. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. But the sprocket is like this big. Oh, so okay. Three inches bigger than it needs to be. Yeah. Three inches? Yeah, she, she completely blew it out of the water. So yeah, yeah this is the sprocket, it now. and it should go here. <laughs> Go, should go in here. Is this like overlapping with that? Yeah. When it goes here? Yeah. So we either. And you obviously, you can't move that this we, way. Well, we can move it this way, but then you start colliding with the aero body and all the other components. Oh. So and the problem is to remachine this smaller means new pitching. Because you see, if you want to keep the gear ratio constant, yeah. 90 tooth pitch, 90 tooth gear, we've got to do this pitch is different, which means this pitch needs to be different. Yeah. Which means I need a new chain which is not like it's not that big a deal but this is cu- more work and this is custom since water jet cut out of aluminium expensive. that's an expensive part to replace which is why we've been trying to avoid replacing it you, i'm imagining if you made like another hole like here and move this down that, that's a potential solution yeah but you know again this moves the whole wheel yeah down so the air body's got a cut out yeah yeah it changes the wheel base but also the well in which the wheel fits in the air body oh yeah 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 i tried okay i tried helping them come up with some solutions to their problems but when the CAD that they have doesn't match the real life part there's, there's just so much that you can do you know what I mean uh, the air body would need to be redesigned but we CNC'd all the wood to do the air body mold yesterday because this was not supposed to happen but the CAD Christine put in, in our CAD files is apparently not the same CAD as this guy so I've been mean, using one of Christine's CADs which don't fit with the car. In CAD, this all fits, yeah, in CAD, this all fits together. In reality, it doesn't. I mean, yeah, building a car, 15 people building a car is like, yeah, overall, like, sm- really small. Uh, well, also, you expect things to go wrong. Yeah, of course. Which of is course. fine. The blade on the bandsaw is made out of wood? No, no it's got wooden te- wood teeth, like it's oh, coarse yeah, teeth, yeah, yeah, thing, yeah, yeah. and he's trying to cut aluminium with it, and he's just going to shred. Right now? Well, no, I stopped him, but okay, good. <laughs> just, I'm you not there. Do you have like a metal tooth uh, hacksaw? We must do. Oh, we have a hacksaw, yeah, we hacksaw. Where the fuck is a hacksaw? I thought what? we did, right? Why do we have a, we don't use wood. Okay, we'll figure this out later. We use wood. You can come in. You can grab her. Yeah, go to yeah. Go to me. You grab. Yeah, grab her. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Let's ask it again. Is this more of the start of the bathroom? The, 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 the uh, suspension? Yeah. Question though, how tall are you? 6'8". That's ridiculous.
serious. If you if you want this to have a smaller diameter, can't you just sand it down? Yeah, no, we can sand it down. We we'll put it away. Well, you can sand it down. Yeah. Sanding, just kind of like this. Thing. Yeah, like get you a belt sander maybe or something. Oh uh, yeah, we, we, we could. But it's going to be a friction fit anyway, like being a press mm. fit is not bad, it needs to be mounted into the bed. <laughs> That's the thing with hardware engineering, when we face problems, they're so much more expensive to solve and they require so much manual labor. Sometimes it has to be a press fit, sometimes it can just be a friction fit, but the, the problem is there's always like, you can never get a perfect machine. Whatever part you have, there's always going to be a little bit of error. And so, for example, you know, with that, we're going to have to probably sand down the shaft just a thousandth of an inch. So it's easier to be able to fit in the bearings. It is a big time commitment. I would have to say it takes away from the time I spend on my homework. I probably would do a bit better in my courses if it weren't for UTSM. I guess, do you guys not feel like guilty? Like when, oh, shit, I should be studying for my midterm, but instead like, um. For sure. This whole reading week, what, like, I've not been to class for like the past three weeks, and I like, <laughs> do catch saying? up on that. Yeah, no. so, but it's okay. Yeah, I know. Oh my God, right. for this reading week, because I'm going to do so much school. And then, We've been uh, here. We've been here, day. like, morning till night. It's, it's also one of those things where arguably, like, I'd say having design team experience is a lot more important than mm -hmm. having um, a good yeah, day, yeah. right? Because Engineering. Unless you're doing a master's, maybe. Yeah, then. yeah. But like, yeah. I mean, most people are doing post uh, post grad. Oh, um, really? Yeah, most people aren't, right? It's just like it's oh, aren't. Oh, they said R. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Aren't. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but it's like one of those things where you really only put your GPA unless it's like crazy good. Like you only put it for it to get your co-op, and then after that, you let your other experiences shine more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah, once it's gone, like, what are you gonna put, right? Like, yeah, yeah. You, you have your you have your like three point eight or three point nine, and then after that, like. It's really more the what you did that matters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So exactly. I would gladly like to trade off. I mean, I do, I do like s sacrifice my grades for this to, to a certain degree. But I would gladly give up like a whole point of my GPA to like have this experience because yeah, I think yeah. it's way more important. It's more fun. Right? Not a lie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Too. It's more to talk about, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. People, like when you're in an interview, they're like, "Oh, tell me about UTSM." I'm like, oh well, exactly. This is my life, so I can talk about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, exactly. If they talk about like this class, I'm like, yeah, well, I hated it. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. No one asked you. I got you a good it. grade, but I hated it, right? Like, yeah, yeah. Talk about. So even that, no one's gonna ask you. So explain to me how you do triple integrals. Like, no yeah. one's gonna ask you that. So I'd say it's, it's more important. So it's, it's worth the trade off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At least, right. My favorite part of the team is the people. Um, here at UTSM, everyone's really friendly, everyone's really nice, and gets along really well. Uh, so I have to say the people that I've met are really nice. Uh, I mean, UTSM has genuinely become like one of my like make my main friend groups. I love spending time with them. No, you don't want. That was so. I know it's for years. No. Okay, if you don't care about drag, mm. you're getting like you're getting a stupid drag. Okay, What's okay, I'm just making a lot. We're not, we're not changing the world. I'm an empath. I'm picking up a lot of rage. <laughs> well. Like everyone's gonna go at seven. I'm gonna stay no, here. Um, what are you gonna do? <laughs> Work on the gear. No, it's, it's not that much of a rush. Just come for, come hang out. We're, you see, she, she's such a hard worker. We're going out for, for drinks after, and she wants to skip that to work on on making a gear. How tall are your parents? I want six each. Whoa, so still. You're still like my brothers. One of my brothers is taller. <laughs> You don't need to remind us. Yeah. <laughs> oh, definitely just working with people. It's a design team's always fun, but like I, that's the best part of a design team is to get to meet new people and like see how other people think and just work off each other. It's a good time. I hope this video brought you value. Now, if you're looking to learn more about anything related to STEM topics, then I'd recommend checking out brilliant.org who are sponsoring this part of the video. They have thousands of interactive lessons on topics like advanced math, AI, data science, and neural networks. They're really most STEM students' best friend. As a mechanical engineer, I'd use it to strengthen my software skills because they may be a bit lacking sometimes. As you may know, we didn't learn much computer science fundamentals in my Mac Eng major. So Brilliant's hands-on computer science courses have been really helpful in helping me 
bridge that gap. They have some basic fundamentals and they have some advanced concepts depending on what your computer science level is. That's just one example of how they can help you learn more and help you become a more well-rounded engineer. To try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days, check out the link in the video description. The first 200 of you to hit the link in the video description will get 20% off on Brilliant's premium annual subscription. Anyways, I'll see you in the next one. Peace! Thank you.